believe is not enough to equate the so-called religious scriptures with transient philosophy. Rather, these scriptures are even inferior to the material science. Although the material science are still imperfect from the ideological and practical point of view, they do not stifle the scientific progress of humanity, though they do stifle subtle intellectual and spiritual progress. But the conniving religious theologies seek to shackle people's feet, making them as static as static as birds sitting on a perch in a cage. Too often they are satisfied with the amount of scientific progress they inherit and do not care for further development. To them molasses is sacred whereas sugar made at the meal is unholy because it is a product of science. To them bullock carts and rowing boats are sacred whereas trains and steamers are unholy because they too are the products of science. And yet if these pr proponents of religion think a little deeper, they will realize that both molasses and sugar are products of science. The age of molasses was an age of undeveloped science. Sugar was a product of a comparatively developed age. We cannot advise today's human beings to go back to the age of candles and oil lamps neglecting the electric light. But some religions impart such teachings. Human beings will have to understand the proper spirit of Nitya Nitya Vivekya and adjust themselves with the prevailing age. They will have to accept without reservation the situation of the particular age they are born into. It would not do to waste one's time in unnecessarily gloating over the past. Nitya Nitya Viveka is an inseparable part of the practice of Dharma. Dharma lays down clear guidelines for moving ahead in perfect adjustment with the prevalent situation. Dharma is the throbbing vital faculty of living beings. In Dharma there is no scope for the accumulated inertness of staticity. Brahma alone is an eternal entity. In the sarana of Brahma is the real practice of Dharma. The ritualistic observances centered around the spatial and temporal factors cannot help in attaining the eternal entity, Parma Brahma. The sustained effort for psychic purification is the only means to become one with him. People who observe ostentatious rituals after indulging in various antisocial activities may be seen as righteous people from the religious point of view, but if they are tested in the touchstone of Dharma, their sinful nature will be revealed. As religions are dependent upon various changing factors, they differ widely from one another. They criticize and mock each other, exaggerating the other's defects and refusing to acknowledge the other's positive qualities. As they have no eternal entity as their goal, they are influenced more by allegiance to their own sect than by any love for humanity. But real Dharma teaches that all living beings of the universe belong to one family. All are bound by the common touch of fraternity. The entire universe is everyone's homeland, and all the animate and inanimate entities are the various expressions of one and the same supreme being. Ararme Pita Gauri Matya Swadesha Bhuvana Trayam Parma Purusha is my father, Parma Prakriti is my mother, and the entire universe is my home. But strangely enough, many religions teach the opposite. They proclaim the exclusive greatness of a particular country, race, mountain, or river. But in Dharma there is no scope for intolerance. For Dharma is based on the solid foundation of vigor, derived from universal love. The goal of reli religion is a non-integral entity, and as such there remains a narrow outlook. The goal of Dharma, however, is infinite Brahma. So the pursuit of Dharma increasingly expands one's vision. Sometimes a kind of alliance is noticed between religions. 
but that is entirely an external alliance. The talk of synthesis of religions is totally absurd. It is merely an apparent show of honesty and grandiloquence to hoodwink the common people. Dharma is always singular in number and never plural, so there is no question of religious synthesis in Dharma. Religion is always plural in number, never singular. The synthesis of religions means their annihilation, where impermanent entities are worshipped as they go through various ritualistic paraphernalia, there is no scope for synthetis- synthesis. Religion is practiced for the fulfillment of mundane aspirations. This is the reason why a class of clergymen emerge centering around the religion. Ultimately, the adherents of these religions become mere tools in the hands of vested interests. With the awakening of Nitya Nitya Vivekya in human minds and the opening of the door of scientific knowledge, it will not be possible to deceive the people in the name of religion or by holding out the lure of happiness in the next world. The vested interests are quite aware of this fact and hence strive to keep the masses lost in the darkness of ignorance. Like parasites, they maneuver themselves to misappropriate by injecting fear and inferiority complexes, a lion's share of what the ignorant masses earn with their sweat and blood. Religious exploiters maintain an unholy alliance with the capitalistic exploiters. With hands upraised, a religious preceptor blesses the wealthy merchants for their future prosperity, but refuses to see the faces of his poor disciples, who fail to provide handsome pranami, a fee for the priest's blessing. You will notice that in many religions, mythological stories and fables are given more importance than science and rational ideas, because they contain ample scope for exploitation of human weaknesses. But in scientific and rational analysis, there is no scope for exploitation. If you consider yourself a Brahmin by caste, then you will have to admit indirectly that the Brahmins had their origin from the mouth of a god named Brahma. But will your scientific intellect agree to this sort of in- rational interpretation? Likewise, if you consider yourself as a warrior, Kshatriya, or a merchant, Vaishya, or a laborer, Shudra, then you will have to accept that you were born of Brahma's hands, thighs, or legs. Anthropology, archaeology, and human history cannot accept these absurd notions. But the adherents of so many religions have to conform more or less to some mythological stories, which are totally contrary to science. By developing Nitya Nitya Vivekya, you will be able to clean your mind of the garbage caused by such superstitions with little effort. Nitya Nitya Vivekya teaches that the entities which are dependent on time, place and person are all transient. The only entity beyond the scope of time, place and person is Paramatma. So he is the eternal one. Nityam Vastrekyam Brahma. The second type of Vivekya, Panchaka, is Dvaita Dvaita Vivekya. Through Dvaita Dvaita Vivekya, one gives the capacity to analyze whether the eternal entity is one or more than one and come to a conclusion accordingly. Dvaita means dualistic and Advaita means non-dualistic. There cannot remain any Svagata, Svajatiya and Vijatiya differentiation in the entity which is beyond time, space and person. So it is not possible for the eternal entity to be more than one. Various beliefs about the so-called gods that one god defeated another in battle but was later harmed enormously by his adversaries, wrathful vengeance, that a certain god spreads or cures a certain disease, and that another god distributes wealth or learning, are contrary to Advaita Advaita Viveka. In spiritual practice, Nitya Nitya Viveka is not enough. Advaita Advaita Viveka is also necessary. For success in spiritual practice, both Nitya Nitya Viveka and Dvaita Dvaita Vivekya are indispensable.
They enable people to realize that all the objects bound by time, space and individuality are transient, while the entity beyond the periphery of time, space and individuality is permanent, it is one without a second. The third type of conscience is Atman, Atma Viveka, literally self, non-self conscience. The role of this type of conscience is to analyze whether the permanent non-dualistic entity is consciousness Atma Bhava or non-consciousness Anatma Bhava. Everything in this universe is a metamorphosed form of consciousness. This metamorphosis takes place due to the influence of static principle. The creation of the world of forms by the static principle continues as a result of the changes in the flow of endless waves. Forms are the expressions of the formless due to the influence of the static prakriti. So consciousness is the process of crudification, is turned into solid matter and takes the form of a perceptible object, relinquishing its original quality of witnessship. That is, consciousness, Atma Bhava, becomes metamorphosed into non-consciousness, Anatma Bhava, from mind to solid matter. There is the domination of non-consciousness, and hence the existence of the three factors, knower, knowledge and knowable. When spiritual aspirants apply an Atmanatma Vivekya, they can easily discern these three factors and come to the, re the, the realization that all the three are changeable and perceptible, and hence non-consciousness by nature. And the entity which is above these three factors, which is one without a second, which is the witnessing entity, is nothing but consciousness. In the mundane world, people run after money. What is the nature of this money? Money is important to buy crude physical objects. It is not a conscious entity. It is non-consciousness. Its necessity is felt by the unit mind. Money is knowable and enjoyable, and the pleasure derived from money is enjoyment. But being in non-consciousness, it cannot be the cause of unlimited happiness. Yet people will do almost anything to attain money. Bribery, murder, adulteration, black marketing, hypocrisy and so on. Such people are the worshippers of non-consciousness, investing all their vital energy in the pursuit of matter. Apply Atmanatma. Vivekya, in all actions and all thoughts. Atmanatma Vivekya has a greater importance in the field of action than Dvaita Dvaita Vivekya. If you utilize it as an indispensable part of your daily life, the true form of the universe will appear before you. Of course, this will never happen if one harbors sinful thoughts while pretending to be righteous. Atmanatma Vivekya will teach you that the singular eternal entity in the form of consciousness should be your only object of ideation. You will see the colors of religion fade before your eyes as the pure white effulgence of Dharma shines with ever-increasing brilliance. All the isms prevalent in today's world can easily be included in the category of religions. All the defects of religions exist in the isms too. None of the political, social or economic isms are free from the superstition. None are straightforward. All are full of rampant hypocrisy. In all isms, doctrines and religions, the scriptural authority is supreme. There is no scope for the functioning of the five types of conscience. No place for service, love or devotion. With the help of falsehood and immortality, these isms, doctrines and religions stand there and make accusation against each other. They make attractive promises to the people while hiding their own internal sins. In fact, false piety is not the path of Dharma leading to welfare, but the opposite of Dharma, the negation, the negation of welfare. They can be likened to assess asses wearing lion skin. Take away the lion skin and their true form will be revealed. They have no other purpose than to grab votes and, votes and assert power. 
The mentality to grab the votes first and then serve the people is not the true spirit of selfless social service. Rather, it is the mentality of power-craving materialists. You will have to advance with the true spirit of genuine social service, because the very characteristic of Dharma is to promote the cause of welfare. Dharma and welfare are inseparable. Religion and intolerance have created enormous harm in the world and caused torrents of blood to stay in the rivers red. In the present 20th century, religions have assumed the form of isms. The people of medieval times fought among the clans and communities and the people of today are fighting over their isms, just as religions did in the past. 